Hello. Hello. And welcome to Success Tips Global. Mm -hmm. Today is September 23rd, 2022. My name is Everett Ofori, and I'm speaking from Tsukuba, Japan. I'm going to speak with a fabulous Japanese lady who teaches her mother tongue and also leads tours for international clients here in Japan. Miss Ineko Hatake, welcome to Success Tips Global. Hello, thank you for having me with you. Okay, so let's begin with your name. Mm -hmm. Does it have any meaning? Oh, okay. My name is um, Ineko, and Ineko is, my father named me um, because we, when I was born, we used to live in a part, um, the, west, the northern part of Japan, and there is a mountain called Mount Teine. And we lived at the base of the Mount Teine. And my father took my name, um, the sound, Ine, from Mount Teine. Mm. And probably he, uh, for Japanese names, uh, we have like meanings. And we often um, have the kanji character okay. for um, our name. And uh, my name, Ineko, Ine comes from, it's the same kanji character as for um, Ine in Mount Teine. And probably my father wanted me to have a broad mind, like the beautiful mountain. Okay. And, and that Mount Fuji, uh, Mount Tene is, um, <clears throat> we, we had the um, Winter Olympic Games in Mount Tene. I think it was in the year 1972 when we had the Sapporo Olympic Winter Games. Okay. What about the, the hatake has a... <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, hatake is, or is uh, my surname. It's originally my husband's um, oh, surname. Okay. Mm -hmm. And hatake means field. Mm. And mm. as for ine, ine has another meaning. Ine means a rice plant. Mm. So um, after I got married, my <laughs> name became like a rice plant in a field. They go together. So, yes, yes, it, it goes very well, I guess. Now I know in Japanese, neko, neko has a meaning, right? When you were a kid, did mm -hmm. children uh, make fun of your name? <laughs> ah, well, um, well, maybe not. My name, um, um, when we were children, mm. like instead of calling, um, like especially, especially when we enter like um, elementary school, instead of calling the people by their, um, their name, mm -hmm. they call each other by their surname. Okay. okay. So my, um, my maiden surname used to be Jimbo. Okay. So I was called um, Jimbo-san. Okay. okay. Mm, yes. That's great. Yeah. Okay. So now you do two main things, if I'm right. correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's start with uh, Japanese language teaching. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, who do you teach? Um, I teach um, foreign, well, I, I teach, what do you say, mm, foreigners mm -hmm. who live in Japan. Okay, maybe. and what kinds of students do you have? Um, most of my students are people who work here, so oh. they're adults. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, are they usually at the beginner level or intermediate or advanced, or do you get a variety? Oh, yes, I get a variety, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is your main mode of uh, teaching? How do you teach them? <laughs> oh, oh, yes, okay. Um, I teach them privately um, using the online system. Okay. So nowadays, you know, teaching in online is quite, um, is getting kind of, you know, it's spreading up because of the COVID. Mm. But I started teaching online more than 10 years ago. So maybe okay. I was mm, mm. ahead of the time. <laughs> so now let's talk about the, the tours. Uh, mm -hmm, where, yes. where do you do your tours? Um, I mainly do my tours in the metropolitan Tokyo area. And mm -hmm. also I go to um, Hakone or Nikko, which is quite near Tokyo. Okay. Yes. And what are some of the favorite places people like to go to? Um, if it's in Tokyo, maybe it's the Meiji Jingu. Okay. And, and, and of course, um, we have this, like, a, what we call a golden course. People start to, their tours, like, they take 10 days traveling from Tokyo to Kyoto, which is from the east to west. And they come in um, to Japan from the Tokyo area. Mm -hmm. And then they go to Hakone. Hakone is like about an hour away from the Tokyo area. It's a beautiful natural um, place. And we have hot springs there. So um, we call it onsen, 
and probably um let's say about 60 to 70 percent um of the people who actually come to um to tokyo will often visit there okay and most mm -hmm. of their clients come from which countries mm, the u.s and mm, the u.s and europe okay. and also australia mm. Mm. i know in japan there are certificates for everything Mm -hmm. So, did you have to take any special certificates to be a tour guide? Oh uh, yes, um, I did have to take a test um, to become um, a national um, certificated um, tour guide. Okay, mm. and uh, how difficult was that test? Mm. I had to do it um, two times okay. <laughs> to pass the test. Okay, that be <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. It was like like mm -hmm. <clears throat> probably the conversation part, the communication part was okay, but mm -hmm. to pass the test, you have to have a broad knowledge mm -hmm. of the Japanese history, the culture, geography, and also the economics mm -hmm. and all other kind of things. Okay. And, and that test is done in Japanese okay so you have to have the knowledge first you have to have the knowledge to pass the test and then comes the um, english or whatever language communication part <clears throat> how do you get around with the tourists is it by train or in cars or vans uh it depends on the guest's budget mm. Mm. and especially um <clears throat> um the guests that i deal with they, um, they are clients that, they are kind of the clients that has, they're rich cl clients in okay. a way, um, and executives. But um, traveling around Tokyo, they like to travel by train. Okay. They want to like experience how the natives will yeah. um, walk around Tokyo rather okay. than going around places by car. And how do, you, how do they, the, these tourists usually react when you take them to certain places? Mm, they are kind of really um, fascinated because mm. the culture is very, very different from the Western culture. Mm. Mm. And I'm adding the explanations about the background. Mm -hmm. and they, they feel more kind of um, excited or they, they kind of get into it. Okay. Mm. Now I want to get to know you a little better in terms <laughs> of your background. Mm -hmm. uh, where exactly were you born and where did you grow up? Okay, um, I was born in Sapporo, as like my name, <laughs> but um, when I was five years old, I moved to um, U.S. and I used to live in Boston, Massachusetts. It was uh, for five years. Okay. It was because my father was attending um, Harvard Medical School at that okay. time. Mm -hmm. And so from there, where did you go? I came back to Japan. Okay. And after that, I've been living in Japan for my whole okay. life. Okay, I see, I see. Okay. So when you were growing up, what did you want to be when you grew up? <laughs> well, at that time, I wasn't quite sure. But when I first, when I came back to Japan, mm -hmm. I was 10 years old. And I really suffered from a cultural gap mm -hmm. of um, Japanese, you know, the Japanese well, at that time I was in elementary school, but <clears throat> the school system was totally different from what I, you know, from the American style. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to be was, I wanted to be a real Japanese. Mm -hmm. mm. I was kind of, you know, my basic education started in the US. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was brought up in the U U um, American style. Mm. education and it was totally different from the Japanese style and I wasn't bullied but I, I felt really uncomfortable mm -hmm. because like in those days in like in the 1970s or in the 1980s the education system was much different from now mm -hmm. and we were told that we should be like one unit mm -hmm. so um to what do you say to to be as a group is more important than to be as an individual mm -hmm. but the american um, educational system was i was taught that it is very important to have yourself mm -hmm. to speak out and to be individual mm -hmm. and that was what i was taught from when i was very young from the kindergarten so 
I really suffered mm -hmm. with that gap. And I, um, and eventually when I was in, like when I grew up and I, at the time I was in senior high school, mm -hmm. I didn't, I just wanted to be like any other one. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to, anyone to know that I was able to speak fluent English. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it was like a shame to be mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. So at that time, when I was young, I just wanted to be a plain, normal Japanese. Okay, so that's mm. what would make you the most comfortable. Yes, yes. <laughs> to fit Japanese in style. with the other, to mm -hmm. fit in with the others. Mm -hmm. But but now, to tell the truth, I, I really appreciate that I had an um, opportunity to grow up in the U.S. Mm -hmm. because it really helps me with this job. Mm -hmm. mm. And it took a very, very long time mm -hmm. to realize that. But I'm really now comfortable, and I guess I'm now I am what I really am. Mm -hmm. mm. How are you able to maintain your English level all this time? Uh, <laughs> I'm really not sure. I didn't have another chance to go to, you know, to go abroad after I came back. Mm. Well, probably it's because I was able to master the language at a certain age. Mm -hmm. They say to master a language between age five to age 10 is mm -hmm. the most golden age for mm -hmm. any kind of person. Mm -hmm. And I have siblings that are younger than I. And mm -hmm. of course, they have lived in the U.S. for mm -hmm. five years. And mm -hmm. they, like my younger sister, who is only like three years younger than me, mm -hmm. she attended elementary school too. Mm -hmm. But she cannot speak um, English at all. No. And she doesn't... Um, understand that much English mm -hmm. so maybe it, it was because the the um the age yes. that yeah. yes yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I mastered the language okay so what did you do after high school um I went to university and I studied English literature there because okay. I love to read books yes. right right so that must also have helped a lot so. oh yes I guess so yes mm. okay and then after university Oh, yes. After university, I entered a normal kind of Japanese um, company, mm -hmm. and I worked as an executive secretary there. Okay. And um, then... Was it I an, got, an international mm -hmm. company or a Oh, no, it was, it was a typical Japanese company, yes, a financial company, mm -hmm. a Japanese financial company. Mm -hmm. And then um, during, um, during working as a secretary, um, then I got married, and then I thought that maybe I should have some kind of certain certificate or something mm -hmm. that I can work even after getting married or having children. Because in Japan, at that time, in the 1980s, like most of the girls, after they got married, they would quit their job and just live as a house mom okay. or a housewife. Mm -hmm. So I went to I start going to an interpreting training school. Okay, okay. okay. And then I got some kind of degrees there, mm -hmm. but um, I got pregnant, mm -hmm. and then I left. Um, and I used to work as a um, an interpreter for for um, a national system called JICA. Okay. Yes. Mm. Okay. And but uh, I, I got pregnant, and I didn't have anyone else to take care of my children, so mm -hmm. I left a job, mm -hmm. and there was like a blank for let's say maybe 15, 10 or 15 years okay. um, before I started um, um, teaching Japanese okay. language. Mm -hmm. mm. And what made you decide to teach? Japanese? Yeah. Well, I was looking for a job okay. and there was this kind, there was this um, offer. Um, you can, it was something that I can do at home. Mm. And I first I thought that, it was just marking the, the sheets, you know, right. because it was the Kumon style. The mm. Kumon style is like um, doing the worksheets at home mm -hmm. and the teacher marks it and send it back. So mm. I thought it was that kind of idea. Mm. And I went to the interview and they said that we're starting a new program mm. um, and we're going to have online lessons. Mm. And I didn't have any experience of teaching Japanese at all it was my first very very first time but the company said it's okay it's a new program we want someone who doesn't who is very new to this this field mm. so I started um, teaching Japanese but I realized that I should have more knowledge mm. about the about teaching Japanese language mm -hmm. and to know what Jap what is 
what is the real Japanese language mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, Japanese will think that they can teach Japanese right. because it's their mother tongue, mm -hmm. but it's not that way. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to know the systematic or the function of the grammar mm -hmm. or how to, you know, the, the, um, the teaching method. Right. So I decided to go to a training school mm -hmm. and I went there for um, three years mm -hmm. and I got my degree for mm -hmm. um, teaching um, Japanese language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So while teaching, what are some of the most difficult areas to teach? Mm -hmm. The most, it's, it's, it's not the area, it's like, um, well, I am a teacher and mm -hmm. an instructor, but at the same time, I am a supporter, mm -hmm. I feel. Okay. Um, it's, not, it's not teaching one way. Mm -hmm. I learn a lot from my students. Mm -hmm. So like we're, we're running together right. and that is as a team. Mm -hmm. And um, what is difficult is to make the students feel that they are improving. Mm -hmm. That is the most difficult thing, I think. Because to master a language, it takes a lot of time. Right, right. Mm, so for my idea, probably it will take like mm, two or three years to mm. tell the truth for the students to really think that, oh, I've really improved. But they want it quickly. Yes. So that is so that is the most difficult thing in teaching the language. So to make them realize um, how much they have improved mm -hmm. in, in a certain like um, period. Mm -hmm. So I always take it um, like look very well. Like I'm um, like three months ago mm -hmm. that mm, the student won't, uh, wasn't able to do this kind of thing, but mm -hmm. now he or she can do that. Mm -hmm. And for the students themselves, it's sometimes it's really hard to realize that. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand that recently you've gone back to school. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you go back? <laughs> well, because of the COVID. Mm. I had um, as a guide. The guide, guiding is my, my main job now. Okay. And I, all my jobs were canceled. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and I always like I I, I didn't realize, but um, but now I, I really realize that my hobby is to study. <laughs> I like to learn new things. Wonderful. <laughs> well, it's it's um, and so um, I had I, I had nothing actually to do, mm -hmm. and um, then I saw this kind of uh, advertisement mm -hmm. on Facebook. And they said that they are, um, you, you can enter university, mm -hmm. you can join us, and it doesn't matter um, <clears throat> how old you are. Mm -hmm. And actually, the tuition was kind of cheap. So okay. I thought that maybe I can try this out. And um, it was, um, what do you say, the course was about art okay. in general. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to learn more about art. Mm -hmm. And because, um, well, when I do when I do my guiding, mm -hmm. it will be very right. you know, useful to know a, a, about lots of things, you know, okay. about oh, not only but about Japanese art, mm -hmm. but comparison with Western art or Asian art oh. or other things. And I was very, uh, I was so much encouraged from you, Everett. So, oh, right? thank you. Because you always, you know, you always, you always tell me that man, I'm, I'm doing this course in this mm. university and this course in that college and stuff. Mm. And I really appreciate, you know, your, your advice. Thank you. Yes, yes. It really encouraged me a lot. And that was one, that was one thing I decided to, um, to go back to university. I didn't have that idea. And many of us Japanese probably do not have any idea mm -hmm. for an adult mm -hmm. to go back to um, university after mm -hmm. graduating. A university is something for young people right. to go. And it's not for us you know, mm -hmm. adults to mm -hmm. go back and study again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm really glad that I had the chance to start a study again and mm -hmm. i'm graduating this um this month actually mm -hmm. but i am tending to enter another course mm -hmm. um next year 
Wow. Mm. <laughs> Wonderful. Mm. Well, I realize that it's related or something different. Oh, it, it is it is related. Um, the next course I'm going to take is kind of focusing on Japanese culture and art. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the first course I took was about it was a, um, art in general. So mm -hmm. it was it did it, um, all kinds of art and yeah. stuff, um, archi architecture, design and things mm -hmm. from around the world. Yeah. But now the next course is focusing on Japanese art. So mm -hmm. I think it'll be another um, good thing to study. Yeah. One more further step to get in. Right. Mm. What, what do you love about living in Japan? Mm. Well, Japan, mm, the nature is beautiful, I think. Mm -hmm. And the, mm, let's see, what's good about <laughs> Japan? <laughs> I've been living in Japan for such a long time. <laughs> so it's, it's sometimes start to re realize. But, okay, but, so well, it's safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And the food is delicious. Mm -hmm. And we can appreciate four seasons. Okay. Mm. So I guess that is one big reason mm -hmm. that I like to live in Japan. Okay. What advice do you give to your uh, students who want to live in Japan for a long time? What are some of the cultural differences they should be aware of? Mm, uh, Japan, Japanese like um, tend to be kind of, what do you say? shy mm -hmm. in the meaning um some people like are surprised like like in the u.s or in western countries if you go into an elevator if you, mm -hmm. if you meet someone if you have an eye contact they would say hi or something like that yeah. but if you come to japan and if you get in an elevator even if you have if you have an eye contact we just stay silent mm -hmm. and yes mm -hmm. so um, I think Japan is a kind of very conservative mm -hmm. country and mm, we have like this kind of silent pressure mm -hmm. and, we, we, and it has it, it's been changing mm -hmm. but still we have this silent pressure that everyone must act the same way mm -hmm. so if you go outside now even that the government says that you can take off your uh, face mask mm -hmm. outside mm -hmm. but but like if you walk around you would see everyone with their face right. masks mm -hmm. and it's okay to take it off but mm -hmm. there's this kind of silent pressure that you know if you take it off mm -hmm. someone will like stare you mm -hmm. stare at you and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff so mm -hmm. sometimes it might be hard to to mm, to live as yourself mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. you have to follow with the others mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are getting to the end. If you mm -hmm. look at your own life, now mm -hmm. you've got many certificates and degrees. Mm. What kinds of habits or advice do you think uh, have helped you to become a good teacher and a good tour guide? Um, let's see. I think it's to have the curiosity mm. and um, the mind to study. Mm. and to learn from others mm -hmm. mm. okay mm -hmm. thank you so very much for taking thank the you time. <laughs> okay bye for now uh, bye bye okay.